What up, what up? He said to begin the stream. Today we're going to be going over uh, class design in Distal. More importantly, we're going to be creating one from scratch. In order to do that, we should probably learn a little bit how or a little bit about how classes are structured in Distal. So we'll go over to so we'll half and half. All right. So when we're designing a class, designing a class, we, hey Henry, uh, we want to think about a few different aspects of it. So currently in the alpha, which is totally free, you can download the, the core rules from playdisrpg.com. Uh, we are trying to figure out the meta goals for the for the class. Um, let me back up. We currently only have six levels available. There is intended to be 12, but we're only going to be talking about the first six here because it starts to get real loose um, after that point. And it's something that I'm still figuring out how I want all that to kind of play out. Uh, I would really like to avoid the uh, the Dungeons and drag, uh, Dragons issue with high level play because uh, things just start to break down after 10. So we keep it a little bit tighter. I've got a lot of that stuff roughed out, but we don't have enough enemies to, to fight. So it's very difficult to test the combat there. That being said, when we're designing a class for Distal, we want to think about what role it serves for the player. So right here, we're looking at uh, the meta goals for the class. So we have a whole bunch of classes. If I go over to here, uh, and then we'll go down to the class list here. OK, so the way that we organize these is mostly into uh, thematic archetypes. In this way, you can play uh, any one of these classes in wildly different ways. If you want to make a, a caster that is more centered around tanking, that's a combination of your gear and uh, which class signatures and specialties you start to, to acquire as you level. But it's totally doable. Uh, there are, I mean, all these classes lean different directions, but nothing locks you down. That being said, uh, brutal fighter archetypes, these are the ones that are all up in your face. Uh, you can still play them like ranged uh, characters, except they aren't specifically, they don't have skills that specifically complement that. Uh, so they're more intended to be kind of upfront and brawlery. And their health bonus is higher, their willpower di uh, power die is uh, lower. Don't need to worry about that though. Skirmishing fighters, these are the more um, agile style of combatants. Uh, people that can move around the battlefield easily. Uh, focus a little bit more on damage output and a little bit less on protecting themselves uh, because they know that they're going to get in and be able to get out. Uh, similarly, like Ranger, I feel like I can probably lump a lot of these archetypes together, but they're more feel. When you play a falconer, you feel like a ranger. When you play a cut purse, you feel like a rogue. Now, when you play a jester, honestly, this one's a little bit more skirmishy, so I should probably go down here, but you're bouncing around the battlefield and like using all sorts of crazy tricks and stuff. Uh, we have the ferryman, who is a, it's classified as a frontline caster archetype, mostly because it has some uh, defensive capabilities that needs to be a little bit closer to access all of its uh, its spellcasting power, and it actually uh, gains spell uh, casting capability as things die, so as the battle progresses. So because of that, um, the way that you play it is just different. Unlike a true caster, which would be sitting in the back traditionally, sitting in the back, throwing spells, helping teammates, and that sort of thing. But again, there's lots of flexibility with all of these particular uh, archetypes. And uh, for those of you who are familiar with the current alpha of Distal, um, the Justicar and the Oracle, these were the two that were the most upvoted in the, the poll. I just got done, done maybe, hopefully, uh, porting them over into the next alpha test. 
So uh, they'll be there with all of their their rules and fun shenanigans. Alrighty, so if we jump back to what makes a class in Distal a class, we want to think about what it serves for the for the meta. So specifically, that's the um, kind of the archetype, the thematic archetype that it fits. We don't have as many skirmishy types. We don't have as many roguish types. We don't have as many frontline castery types right now. So when we make a new class, probably want to kind of share, you know, the love and spread things out a little bit. So we might end up making something here, or we might end up making uh, something here, or maybe maybe a ranger. Still undecided. I have a handful of different ideas, but you can let me know what you think. Additionally. We want to, when we're designing a class, we want to think about the themes, the feelings, the fantasies. So a lot of the the way that uh, classes work in, or not just Distal, but Dungeons and Dragons, Pathfinder, that sort of thing, is that they are meant to evoke a specific emotion and a, uh, meant to a tap, tap into uh, constructs that we hold in our head based on the things that we've experienced in the past. So a paladin is like it's a holy knight you know shining armor and they uh you talk about them being very like you know lawful and uh, sometimes militant but always uh focusing on the, the greater good and that's not the only way that you can play paladin but that's what comes to mind you think about smiting is just a big part of their uh, kit uh, you think about auras and that sort of thing um being aware of those uh what would you call them tropes i guess uh, associated with the the mentalities behind traditional classes is important, but you don't need to be beholden to it. In Distal, our classes are super diverse. They're also more specific than something like D&D because they need to be grounded in the world. They should have a reason for existing, and that's something that will probably... Actually, I'll write a line there too. Um, where do they originate in the... Uh, originate? No, let's keep it there. We'll be talking about like like lore, um, reason for being. Uh, let's see, how's the gameplay of the game? Will there be any video? Uh, so Scott, we are working on a tabletop role playing game, um, but I will be doing an actual play with a, a few real life friends very soon. Haven't announced that um, anywhere else. Uh, aside from, I guess, the supporters chat in, in our uh, development discord, but um, it's hopefully it'll be it'll be a good way to figure out how the game is actually played. We're going to go through character creation first in the first episode, and then we'll run a three episode story arc, but it's going to be an actual play. So if you've seen shows like Critical Role, I mean, <laughs> Critical Role is a bad example because that's not the standard that most TTRPGs um, hold themselves to, or actual plays. Uh, it'll just be a few people on Discord talking about their characters and, and playing the game. Hopefully, I'll be able to just speak through some of the rules, what people are doing, and kind of elaborate on some of the points as we go through. So that's the closest thing that you'll get of a, a video of actually playing the game, and hopefully it'll help people out. Uh, let's see. So we think about their... Uh, the reason that they exist within this game, within this world, and we can make it up. It just needs to be made up. Uh, let's see. And then we'll think about what makes them mechanically unique. You don't want a new class to have the same abilities or the same like angles, like pursue the same angles as another class. And then once we get into the super nitty gritty, we'll talk about the um, the actual skills in developing them uh through the guidelines that we have. So level one, uh, we typically try to define the, the class uh, in some implicit manner. So let's look at um, the Berserker just as an example. You can see, so from this title here, it says ritualistic. So that immediately, just because of its name, gives you an idea, uh, it kind of adds some flavor. They know religion, they know medicine. All uh, Berserkers know these sorts of things. And when you think about um, the Vikings of old, and or rather, I guess, the, the myths that we kind of surround with the um, kind of uh, that thought of, of Vikings, or maybe even like Norse mythology, 
you, you'll end up kind of in a similar space. And then we look at the actual abilities. Blood Rush, whenever you're bloodied, so whenever you have less than 50% of your total health, you can headbutt people and you move faster. So as a player at level one, I know like, oh, okay, this is the style that I need to to play um, my character in. Like this is kind of what they're they're meant to be. And then headbutt, it's a it's an attack. So we we basically let people like know, hey, you get some cool stuff for being uh, below half half health. At level two, we will uh, define the first key abilities of the class. I guess this is probably poorly phrased, but this um, this is a class ability. So recklessness for the berserker is something that we kind of echo all throughout its kit. It will be built upon uh, and expanded, or like it, it might branch to, uh, based on these sorts of things that you unlock. Uh, and it also, this is, level two is, um, it's not the same for every class, but level two is when the class is meant to, to come into its own. So at level one, you'll get a better understanding of how to play the class. And at level two, you'll be, uh, you'll be locked into, to like the main, uh, the, the core components of the class. But all of this is kind of, um, kind of is meant to, to mesh together. Because at level three, you uh, this is your first class decision. It helps shape your party's role, eh, potentially, and then it usually expands on class abilities. So if we look at, um, uh, let's go down to like Ambushing Berserker. So if you wanted to play something that is pretty close to a stealthy type of Berserker, what would you imagine that as? Like people who are kind of sneaking up and, you know, marauding caravans and that sort of thing, you know, waiting to ambush. Uh, gutter run means that whenever you begin your turn obscured, which means that you're like out of line of sight of all the enemy combatants or you're waiting in the shadows, uh, blood rush becomes active the for at the beginning of your next turn. So you don't need to be below 50% health. You can just be stealthy and still get this benefit and still be able to um, to jump into your like to, to headbutt people. That's as a um, that, so that kind of dictates the, the playstyle. So if you were a berserker that was uh, focusing on this style, you probably want to be a more stealthy berserker. So this is what I talk about when they, when you could play the classes in totally different ways. It uh, We expand upon the core concepts, but we do so in such a way that it kind of twists them to your need. Cool, thanks Scott. Uh, Henry says, I'm personally fascinated by the pure righteous types having potential holier-than-thou attitude toward uh, common dirty peasants, which gives them more ambiguity than first meets the eye. Uh, yeah, no, I, I totally, I dig it too. Not, I think it's, actually, I think it's kind of boring to play, like, people who are always one thing. Actually, I, I shouldn't say boring. It can be very difficult to play a paladin that's just, like, 100% righteous 100% of the time. Because, because there's a flaw, which I think is like what you're alluding alluding to. But if you look at the Justicar, which um, is nobody's seen this yet, but um, so Justicar is uh, well, it says you know referred to as Justicar mainly by Wencian religions, which Wencian is like the human that the majorly popular human religion within the king's, uh, the king's canvas. Uh, many of the larger denominations wield their own versions of these militant enforcers to uh, spread influence or fear. The title of Justicar comes to those who, with years of martial training and an unshakable faith in their purpose, whatever it may be. So, uh, a couple of things from that. You're a tool. As a Justicar, you're being wielded by the churches to project fear or, or influence. Uh but the Justicar probably don't feel that way. They probably feel like they're protecting people. They are the, a shield of the uh, faithful. They are a crusher to the heretical, things that stand uh, opposite of the, the beliefs that you've built your whole persona around. Uh, so very paladin-like, but I think the Justicar lean a little bit toward uh, more law archetypes. And so like, yeah, there's like uh, scales of justice is their level two ability. Um, they're still like ritualistic because they 
have some sort of power that fuels their abilities. And then they have, um, yeah, like law is just a continued concept, but law can mean anything. It's just like, is it the, the law of the land? Is it the law of your gods? Is it um, the people who tell you to act in a, a certain way? So you can kind of um, contort it in that respect. The, uh, the dwarves actually have a, um, their Justicar referred to as the Bremen Guard. And Bremen Guard, or Bremen, just means mountain. And uh, guard meaning like guard. They, uh, they sacrifice their, so as a, a sign of faith, they get their eyes replaced with like magical opals that they can still see out of, but uh, but they've like given up their their actual eyes. Anywho, uh, yeah. So and then it kind of like loops back around. Uh, so at level four. We introduce, uh, we tend to, it's not the same for every class, but we try to introduce a new class mechanic. Um, so if we go back to, let's go back to Berserker since we're using that as an example. So at level two, recklessness, this is the main one that we keep expanding upon. Uh, and then at level four, um, we get, so range recklessness, this can like, okay, you can trigger it from ranged attacks instead of just melee attacks which is just an upgrade. Um, but then you have uh, bloodied response, which at once per turn while blood rush is active, you can use recklessness without uh, using it a reaction to do, to do so. So I guess this is probably one of those classes where it's not like strictly a new, new ability. Um, I think Berserker in general is kind of meant to be more, uh, it's meant to be a simpler class because they have kind of a, a more directed goal than some of the other ones. and. The class is kind of, they're all over the place with their complexity level. So you can pick something that you, you kind of want to play. And even within their level three uh, class selections, you have stuff that's intentionally meant to be more simple and then stuff that's meant to be a little bit more involved. Uh, so for example, the rune marking berserker is like, you're casting rune marks, but it's there's like support actions and some of them you use when you're bloodied and like you set yourself up for for different things or you set your teammates up for different things um yeah maybe let me find a better example specifically so if we look at falconer oh you got so much stuff for level one because it because it's just a, a companion and anytime that you use pets at all it's just like a whole boatload of additional text. Uh, part of me wanted to just to turn companions into weapons, but I wasn't super sold on on whether or not that should be the case. Uh, let's see. So at level two, a falconer gets exposed vulnerabilities, and then you spend some of this uh, this class selection choosing to like how do you want to expand it. So distracting vulnerabilities. Uh, interacts with exposed vulnerabilities. Um, Coiled Viper uh, interacts with exposed targets. And then then this one is, is more like support oriented, so it doesn't. And they don't all need to, but you tend to build upon it. And then at level four, we introduce something new. Um, this gives you like a new technique for your Raptor. It's called Observe. And then, and then we kind of loop back around. Um, well, there's a space first because this is just it's meant to be more simple on a direct upgrade, but this will interact uh, a lot with observe. So like Mage Breaker, while observe is active, you do this other thing. Um, while observe is active, you can do this other thing. Uh, yeah. Opal eyes glaring at you zealously. Uh, I have a, a tattoo that just says zeal across it it's on my shoulder and when i was this is totally off topic when i was um a back in high school i used to do a lot of break dancing and that's what i wanted to call myself was zeal because it's like fervorous pursuit of uh 
you know, like an, like an ideal or something. I don't know. I can't remember the definition. But um, I got that tattoo the day that I left Alaska. And it only cost 75 bucks. And then I was on an airplane. It was still fresh. And then I left to, to go to Idaho. And then a bunch of stuff happened. But uh, Let's see. So in level 5, we tend to do a flat increase to power. I want to caveat this by some of this are saying some of this is outdated. Um, so it may, the way that we structure the power might change. But before, you used to get something important, like around level five, it was a your second specialty. And then, so that, and you used to get less specialties. So that we didn't overload people, you'd give them the specialty, and then also you'd get them something that was just like low key. So. While plot armor is active, disengaging only costs this. It's kind of weak, um, but you'll see that as a recurring theme in a in a lot of stuff. Like this is now this is a new ability, but it's really really specific. Um, uh, this is like this only activates when you're involved in a surprise round. It's like usually low key stuff for level five. It doesn't need to be that way, but. Uh, at level 5 also, we tend to, or level 5, level 6, that's the level that we, for some of the classes, where you start giving them a little bit more, actually I don't even know if that's true anymore, I have to, I have to kind of double check, I've done a lot of iteration over time, but one of the goals, and the Dervish class, which isn't another game yet, has this, we try to give you ways to circumvent resistances, because that's something that you butt up against a lot. And at level five, you, we, we give you more tools to, uh, to work around them. But depending on the class you are, there's, there's a bunch of tools already. Uh, let's see. Okay. And then at, the, at level six, it kind of loops back around. And you basically keep going through something similar to this all the way up through 12. That being said, let's make something new. Uh, what would, I don't know how many, how many people we have in the chat. Usually it's not too many. Yeah, I think it might just be me and you, Henry, uh, at the moment. But we, or maybe that's just the people chatting. I don't know, I can't tell. What would you like to see? For Actually, okay, I, I shouldn't leave it that open. One of the meta goals is that I would... I'd like to see probably another rogue-like class. Something that's meant to be skirmish-y. Um, ideally something that can also operate from range. So something that probably um, runs the line between a ranged, like a ranger style class and somebody who's a little bit more, um, more hit and run focused. Hi, Box Fisher. Okay, Lurker's Lurking, got it. Um, so let's say that. Let's, let's find something in this this realm. Uh, skirmishy, rangery. Um, and I'll say I'll say hybrid two. So hybrid. Spellcastery. That, okay, that's that's the medical. Uh, I had a few thoughts. Originally, I was thinking it'd be cool to make a Corsair. Um, something swashbucklery. Uh, and then I was thinking. Well, okay, so like a Corsair, you could just deal with water too. And there could be some, some elemental uh, capabilities to manipulate that sort of thing. Doesn't need to be that though. I was also thinking um, like a rangery style class. I had a few ideas. I was thinking like a, this would be kind of like a, a hybrid ranger rogue style gameplay, but like a recluse. So somebody who is a hunter, but there's like spidery elements. 
and I think they they would be from like like it's a fighting style maybe that you would learn, or it's uh it's a specific uh maybe even like a cult that has a lot to do with um with those sorts of of animals, maybe like an assassin's guild and that sort of thing. But the the dervish, which again it's not in the alpha packet yet, I. Uh, their fighting style they animate uh daggers or one-handed weapons and then they can use them to to do all sorts of fun stuff um and and their fighting style originates from from a guild of assassins they're called the children of the sun and then they they run uh they basically like uh run Dusthaven, which again, none of that stuff is in the game yet. So what about something? It's either going to be water or mist. I'm thinking let's, uh, because names matter, but I'm going to throw this out for the time being. Do like a mist runner class. <clears throat> So what styles? Oh, well, okay. I'm just gonna go through, and I'm not gonna stop. But if you feel like chiming in, totally do that, because uh, I, I do. I, I think we'll, we'll actually build on a, a class um, here real quick. So, Mist Runner. I'll just say that the name can change. Medicals are uh, skirmishy, rangery, hybrid spellcastery. Maybe we'll see. Uh, themes and feelings. When I think Mist Runner, I think like elusive. I think um, hit and run. I think Ranger or uh, Pathfinder. Uh, I I can imagine them uh, being kind of shadowy, you know, uh, which you know implies that kind of a hit and run stuff. But striking from nowhere is probably somewhere something that I would, I would want to to do. I also think like uh, what is the what's the dude in Shadows of War and Shadows of Mordor? It's not Islander, is it? Probably not. But uh, when he goes into the Wraith world. I think about some of that stuff. Seems kind of, you know, misty and uh, I think bypass. Not like a gastric bypass, just like bypass defenses. Okay, and where do they, where do they originate? What's their, uh, what's their reason for being? I'm gonna keep them. Maybe, so I'll just throw some concepts. Maybe they're uh, like hired, hired assassins is just like such an easy, uh, it's like an easy trope to, to hold on to. Maybe instead they're from a, maybe originally they were protectors of a, of lakes and rivers. And maybe these lakes and rivers belong to protectors of lakes and rivers uh, that you could say that run like above ley lines, but so protectors of, of rakes and rakes. Uh, of autumn and rakes, Let's see lakes and rivers, or maybe uh, maybe they have a uh, developed a style of combat based around or meant for smuggling. Among the high seas. So 
I imagine they they can use the water that exists to like like vaporize it and become mist. Uh, and vaporize the the water, and so we can we can keep them. We could go this direction, which makes them more like like tribal sort of um, you know on the outskirts of society, protecting their guardians of, of very specific passageways. I, I think that lakes and rivers would probably be like um, which are portals to uh, like portals to the um, which is the plane of storms uh trips are good for a reason yeah totally um it's uh the question is how far can you push something while still making it feel familiar and uh familiar and not the same thing and i i like i really like doing that because it creates so for example i love the ferryman class uh in this game and the ferryman you're thinking about, uh, uh, Chiron? Chiron? <laughs> nope, that's not right. The, the, uh, one who runs Karen? Yes, Chiron. <laughs> C-H-A-R-O-N. Uh, who, you know, navigates the, the river Styx and is responsible for taking people up and down, you know, whatever, whatever. People understand that trope. They also understand, uh, like Davy Jones and just the, uh, you know, the Flying Dutchman, because it exists, you know, elsewhere. And I realize that I don't have my thing up on the screen again. Um, and because of that, you can, you know, you can turn it into to something that feels familiar in that regard, and you can kind of like let people lean into whatever side of that they want, but it still feels really unique. Uh, let's see. So I kind of like this one, where they're more like uh, guardians, like elemental guardians, maybe. But we already have elementalists, and you can kind of swing that from just a story perspective. So if we make them more, um, more scoundrelly, you might have some tropes there that you can use too. So for example, um, so these are. I'm actually going to move these down to like mechanics. But if we weren't, if we were to go with. Oh. Okay, cool. Uh, let's do. Neat. So if we were to use this one, we can say that. Uh, we'll just leave this one in reserve. We'll say that, you know, high seas. You inspire like Corsair, smuggling, um, swash, buckling. But I don't know if I want it to be that um, that like sort of bravado pirate stuff. I think I want people to to get there on their own. Uh, I think some designer somewhere meant a specific number is when talking about that familiar versus unfamiliar ratio. I forget where I heard that though. Uh, I can imagine so. Uh, would being a natural protector have a lot of overlap with the dryad class? Mm, interesting. Um, so the way that the dryad works in, in specifically, uh, I think you may have been around to, to hear this, but for, for everybody else, they a dryad is a spellcaster that has entered a pact either willingly or unwillingly with some sort of woodland entity. And usually it's in service of a grove. So like an entire, it is a, like a grove or a forest or, you know, a glade, something like that. So it's not even, you can't even point to one specific thing and say like, oh, okay, that's, that's who gives me my power. It's like this place gives me power. The bargain is that you, like we will give you the power to save your friends, to become powerful, to uh, do like, uh, what's the, the vote the vote for Pedro thing? Um, you vote for me and all your wildest dreams will come true. You can do that, but when you're done, when you die, you will be ours forever. 
you essentially become a dryad because you're doomed to that fate. And your body, like you'll lose your memory, you will no longer be you at the end of it. So the time that you have, you have to determine what to do with that. Um, and then there's some other things like you can't touch metal because that's, that's very like druid old school in 3.5. Um, and I always like that, just that, that sort of limitation. But um, if, you, if you touch metal, you start to, your skin starts to harden and you become tree-like, which is an ability that you can use to like prevent incoming damage. You're more flammable though. Um, but uh, but early on you can't you can't shift like that. So like if somebody wanted to to trap you, they would take iron chain and bound you in it, and you would have no choice but to live on as a tree. <laughs> It'd be really really jacked up. Um, but I, I think that uh, box fisher, if you went this direction protectors of lakes and rivers i imagine watery uh very ethereal kind of magic but in the form of a mist and maybe they are maybe they're like tribal protectors so like they aren't bound to the thing that they protect maybe they're gifted some sort of skill or maybe there was a fighting style that developed um, using gifts that were like passed down. So maybe it's just like this sort of gift of um, being able to kind of change shape was, uh, it's just a birthright. So something that um, that filtered down to your your blood and you know, who knows whose descendants, uh, descendants you were, uh, you pulled that from, but maybe they were all just like descendants of a particular of Isidre, which is the, the the plane of storms. Maybe they have some sort of blood connection there. So it could be, this could maybe be like the original purpose, but isn't the present day reason, the present day need. Or maybe not, who knows. I found some blog, blog posts talking about in the context of, oh, cool. Yeah, thank you. Um, I don't have a Discord open now, but I'll definitely take a take a look when we're done. Okay. Let's see. Can we think of something more more interesting than this? What's a, a broader need or some sort of adaptation that would have caused a uh, created a mist runner? Maybe it's just a skill that they developed. They just have some sort of innate, very similar to elementalists, um, some sort of innate connection to the the air uh, around them, and then they can harness it in some way, or it could be learned maybe too, just like in a, in the same way that arcane, or like you you develop uh, arcane potential and in, in like a ma magister, like you just read. It's very math like. I don't not really feeling that for this, but. We'll move on to the skills and kind of like backfill later. So mechanically, in order to to know what these people should, oh, hold on. I'll get better at, at this at some point. In order to know what we want to use for or give them for skills, we have to know what everybody else has, which I've, I've got that down, I think. Um, I do a lot of changing very quickly, so hopefully I still have it in mind. But uh, we we want to give them some sort of simple hint that this is what you're all about. Um, I'm going to pull in this. Actually, you know what? Why don't we just... Um... No, nah, I don't want to get there yet. It'll get distracting. Usually I'll just like duplicate a page and then start typing um, cat hands on keyboard and then end up with something. But let's say, actually, we'll, we'll say level one. Oops. 
we'll actually start putting this together. So it's not Pathfinder. We want to give them maybe survival. Um, maybe... Excuse me. Um, it could be religion. Religion is pretty popular. Actually, let's do let's do Arcana and survival. Because that is... I don't think we have that combination yet. So they... I, I, man, I'm, I'm imagining like ancient ruins that people, that you, you have like people coming out of the mist and, and attacking you and you just don't know where they're coming from. So what would, uh, what's a general term that would kind of incorporate uh, survival and, and arcana? I would say like, um, Let's do um, like a hermit doesn't quite get there, but, and so imagine that these are going to be reused in multiple classes. Once the list starts getting long, there's only so many combinations you can do, but, um, and I want to kind of keep the names in, in parody so it has some similar threads. But So this term is just going to be more general. Uh, they could be ritualistic like berserkers. But I think arcana and survival. Okay, well, we'll, we'll figure this out in a bit. And then their, their second ability. So I imagine these people fighting with uh, either bow and arrow or spears. You don't need to do that. You can do whatever you want. Weapons are very, very, very flexible. Um, and you can you can imagine, if you can imagine any sort of character, you could probably um, figure out what you want that to be. I also like the ley line, body, water, intersection you mentioned earlier. Yeah, yeah. That, if that's where like, like a conflux of energy uh, happens to be um doesn't need to be like a major anchor point it could be like think of it more like a uh like a ley line tributary where there's like a little offshoot maybe maybe the magic um what if it's just like like it there's water that is suffused with with magic and then just growing up in the sort of area is something that uh, there's like some sort of uh, lay bleed that kind of permeates the the environment that these people maybe grew up in. I don't know. Or maybe you know of one of these places and you take people here to, I mean, they could have built up like ancient um, temples around these sorts of areas because they're like, permeated with magic and you could do um, interesting things like connect to other planes or talk to you know spirits and, and that sort of thing um, part of me feels like what do I do like this is a little bit closer. I want to find a term that's a little bit closer than that, but isn't like nomad. Like it has to be like, what's what's an arcane wanderer? We'll find it. So what would be a cool uh, ability to kind of really lock them down and say, this is what your class is about. You can make them very elusive. You can say, as a reaction, you can take on a particulate form, which is a spell in Pathfinder. Uh, particular, particulate form. I'll say, I'll say a missed form. Uh, you can. Uh, 
uh, as a reaction. Let's see. To an incoming attack. Um, mundane. Uh, I'm going to have to workshop this, but it's fine. Mundane. See, it's a reaction? I want them to do something, though. And it, it also needs to, like, this This isn't telling you what sorts of weapons you gravitate toward. So it's a, it's a little too vague, but I'm going to leave the idea anyway. Preventing Monday damage uh, until the beginning of your next turn. Well, in, uh, or rather, you can take on... See, preventing you from receiving any mundane damage, you form reset shape solidifies at the beginning of your next turn. So, what if, um, And we can also make it like a so this this is starting to sound like level two stuff. I think it needs to be more more generic than that. Um, here I'll get there in a bit. Some for wanderer, a oh, drifter, wayworn, wayworn. That's that's interesting. Uh, Voyager is kind of fun. It's a little bit too oceany though. Some for wanderer, adventurer, beachcomber. Bum, Drifter, Explorer. Do, 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 do. Roamer. Um, you know what I'll do? I was, so I was going to make this a whole separate class, but I'm going to say Exile for now. And this might end up shaping into something else. Like it might actually become the Exile class. I was thinking of something that was, that felt very monk-like. And then Exile was was what I was going to call it. And they could, they could like move through your, like after they make an attack, they can move through your, uh, through you to the other side. Um, stuff like that. Cause you're, you're not allowed to pass through, um, enemy spaces normally. Um, but I think you could probably do something similar here. Mm -mm. Let me move this into the second one. So we'll we'll sit on that because that that seems to ring some bells for me. Like you you are someone who knows things and is also on your own. But we'll see. Um, and it could be a good explanation for just why a mist walker would be, or mist runners would be like on the outskirts of society. We might actually just end up calling them exiles and then go down that route, but we're not there yet. So what can I do? Uh, let's see. I could drop them to... You know, it might be fun to just put them in a mist form. Oh, you know what? Okay, um, whenever you become hidden, you... I'm, I'm starting to to work the, the rogue direction. But whenever you become hidden, you... Oh, sorry, while you are hidden, you do not lose the condition. Okay. 
that's okay. The verbiage is wrong. Um, preventing you from losing the condition. Oh, okay. When you, I'll say difficult to track, or maybe fade into. It's going to be a lot of missed terms. Uh, or I'll say dissolve. <laughs> Sorry. Listen, this is how it works, okay? You just write things on paper, and then eventually things take shape. Uh, you probably know that. Let's see. When you... Uh, you cannot... Uh, Lose the hidden condition by ending your turn in and the verbiage is so hard. Basically, I want to say like, so most of the time the hidden condition, what it does is if you are, so first off, in order to become hidden, you have to be obscured to everybody. And obscured just means that you are out of line of sight of everyone, which also means that you could be in the darkness or you could just be behind a pole and then use an action and you can become hidden. There's no check. It's just you're, you're hidden because the way that hidden works in our game is it basically increases your defense. It takes your stealth skill and adds it to your defense. And what it means, what it's meant to um, abstractly convey is that you are harder to hit. Somebody might have a general idea of where you are, but they don't know. Uh, so if they take a shot in the dark, like a, instinctually, you know, they hear you moving, your defense is going to be higher. Uh, and that's, that's the way that it's we're swinging it. Um, to me, it makes a lot of sense. And I really like that better than like, oh, well, is he in the, the square or is he not? I don't know. Um, I guess you'll have to figure that out. Or like, make believe. Or just like, yeah, you, know, you have disadvantage from hitting this thing that you can't see. Uh, all of that's obnoxious to me. So, going the other direction and saying like, yeah, you could take a shot if that's your best option. But characters probably wouldn't do that because they're going to have a, or rather creatures wouldn't be able to, willing to do that. Um, if they, unless they like really, really, really were trying to find you. Uh, let's see. So anyway, what I was trying to say is that instead of losing the hidden condition when you are no longer obscured uh, at the end of your turn, because that's how it works, you you just stay hidden. Uh, hey, Kiwi. Uh, what games have you been playing lately? I've been playing a lot of um, uh, Deep Rock Galactic lately i've been playing uh very little very little in the way of games yeah very 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 little i was on a Baldur's gate 3 kick for quite some time um but i've already beaten that and kind of toward the end of it again uh or kind of sort of in the third chapter and i don't really feel like playing it anymore um, great game, but, and I've just been like super focused on trying to build this, that that's where the majority of my time is gone. Whenever I am playing games, usually it's because I'm just burnt out and need a break or I'm spending time with my kid. Um... Oh yeah, fog cloud box fisher. Fog, fog cloud works only for the people who are inside of it, right? Like they have a hard time seeing. Whereas darkness is for people who are shooting into it. They would have disadvantage that way. Uh, let's see, some for wanderer. Oh yeah, right, got that. Um, does just moves dr uh, removes dr? Do you become visible? Yeah, I need to. I'll figure it out. But that doesn't really tell me like. How to play the class it gets a little bit closer maybe i want to say like um uh 
hold on. You are not required to become or to be obscured to all hostile combatants in order to become hidden. But this this also means that you would need to that you would need to know the rules for for the hidden stuff, and I'm not sure that feels too good either. Uh, let me check back on if we go to cut purse because it's starting to get a little invasive. Um, see, they just get dagger twist. So what I mean when I say like level one should give you an idea of what your class is all about. This says, as a reaction, when you land an attack with a weapon that has backstab, uh, you can use that weapon's backstab effect if you would not normally meet the requirements for doing so. So it tells you two things. Um, first off, that you're using a reaction. Uh, secondly, that you should be using weapons that have backstab. So between these two things, uh, it kind of it frames your, your class. And then there's a bunch of things that... Uh, that build upon it and modify it and that sort of thing. So we need to find something similar for for the Mist Runner. Yeah, I'm I'm feeling like they they should just be like like hard to pin down. Let's do this. Um, should they have spell slots? Uh, you can pass freely through hostile. Nah. Mm. I'm trying to think about all the things that they could do. Like we could empower their attacks, but they should be about positioning and evasion. Uh, what sorts of things? You can make it so they can disengage really easily. So that they... Yeah, I keep wanting to to go back to this. Where does their power come from, too? Like we talked about, you know, lakes and rivers and that sort of thing, but like where do how do they channel it? Could be maybe it's I mean, so elementalists deal a lot with their weapons, like they imbue their weapons. What if they, these people had like tattoos that they would activate or or maybe they would like breathe or hold their breath and when they do they can they have they're like weightless weightless is a fun idea was there a my hero academia oh there was there's there's a my hero academia character that i think i think he needs to hold his breath and then he can pass through things it was the, I think it was the weird one with um with the really blonde hair and the super small pupils. I'd love to see, uh, let's see. Uh, dude, games have been kind of sucky lately. I think it's just me, but I, um, I think 
Kiwi, as I get older, I, I don't know how old you are, but one thing that I've been noticing is that as I get older, the things that I'm investing my time in are way more specific. If a game can't entertain me for like hundreds of hours, I kind of don't even want to play it. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that's not right. Uh, fog cloud is heavily obscured anywhere inside, so creatures inside are blinded, and any attacks against them have advantage. But they're also hidden. Um, creatures inside are blinded, and any attacks against them have advantage. But they're also hidden against... Oh, okay, got it. I'd love to see more thoughts on better gaming vids, um, just like the, the well-written articulated nature. So that's just me thinking out loud, um, if you don't want to do this. Um, oh, thank you. Thank you, Kiwi. Yeah, I, I hope that I can find some sort of middle ground. Um, the last video that I talked about, um, just like harsh realities, I feel like that felt more like thoughts on better gaming video territory without actually going there. <laughs> All the sources of the water stuff I could think of are just plain gross. Yeah. I get you. What if, what if these guys just create an obscurement? And if they're creating the fog cloud, I feel like it should shape around them. But if it was like constant, then I don't want it to break the action economy. Um, okay, we'll save this. Uh... Uh, strike in. You take a creature. You can pass through its space. Okay, we're just going to chill on that for a bit. I keep coming back to some of these ideas, but... And then, let's build on this. So, drift around. When you attack a creature, you can pass through its space um, until the beginning of your next turn. Or pass through its space... Um, when you attack a creature, you can pass through its space... And do not consume movement while doing so. Uh, let's see how many attack creature. Oh, let me let me broaden this a little bit. Creatures you attack oh wait you can move freely through the spaces of creatures you attack on your turn and stepping into uh, a space occupied by one of your targets does not require movement to do so uh, you cannot end your turn in the space of. Infected creature. So basically, um, we'll say like, imagine some sort of warrior that is swinging a, a blade at you and then you just f kind of they shape themselves kind of like around you, like they flow like water. And then they uh, they might strike at something else. And it doesn't matter if you hit or not. Um, but just by like moving the actions, they kind of like are flowy and moving through the battlefield. So if you have, um, 
Does that mean other creatures can pass through you too when it's active? Um, this would just be the end of your turn. So basically, on your turn, um, we're going to say that, uh, yeah, so like you strike and you can step into their, their space that costs no movement, and then you can step out of the space that costs five movement. Uh, and if you have a, a bunch of creatures that are like lined up, and you have two weapons. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I can imagine you like taking an attack uh, at one and then like moving up to, to strike another and you kind of just like twirl through the, the battlefield. But I like in a sort of like shapeless, formless way. It seems dope. Um, but mobility and being elusive. So now you can do things like, um, so Henry, you were just talking about, uh, oh, I feel the same way in terms of uh, time investment, make changes that reduce skill ceiling, it's just not fun. Yeah, I I see where you're coming from, Kiwi. I don't, I think it depends a lot on game to game, but I, I totally see. There's definitely been a push to make games easier to or more accessible basically and a lot of that comes from like dumbing things down and part of it's a survival mechanism because there's so many games to play out there and it's really really difficult to get your your game in front of people but it's just people have shorter retention spans um, I don't like I don't know like literally shorter attention spans, but they certainly have more things to that are trying to occupy their time, so they they can very easily bounce off when there's something that they don't agree with, or if something feels like it has too much friction, I just go to the next thing because something else over here is going to be easier. So I think everybody's kind of like in the sort of race to the bottom when it comes to making a game more accessible, and uh, I think that's where some of the feelings that you're talking about come in. At the same time, I think there's niches that are being created for stuff that is super hardcore or is super gritty or, you know, super difficult. If you look at, for example, um, what Elden Ring that they came out, not my type of game. I tried to play it. I got frustrated by the UI and then immediately quit. <laughs> it was, I, For a game that is lauded as it is, the UI made me want to vomit in my mouth. Um, I... Man, I, I have a strong negative reaction to it. Uh, thanks, VT. Cool, have a good night. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay, so let's let's move on. First, key abilities. So this is like this is agnostic of any weapon it it kind of alludes to a melee weapon though which i'm wasn't really going for i was really hoping for some range stuff but uh, but i guess it doesn't necessarily need to be the case uh it doesn't prevent opportunity attacks so so maybe that's something that i could think about and then if you have a if you have a weapon that's aoe that's kind of interesting too because it would free up multiple spaces for you to pass through um let's let's do this uh let's say mist shape as uh as a technique you take on a particulate okay we're doing this again take on a mist nope mistake mist form until the beginning of your next turn. Uh, while in this form, you be the target of opportunity attacks. Or rather, you cannot, uh, you do not provoke opportunity attacks. It's the correct verbiage. And then uh, any 
attacks made against or any do not provoke opportunity attacks. Uh, and you cannot make attacks of your own. Do not wait. Do not provoke opportunity attacks. Cannot make attacks of your own. Uh, and uh, you become. Okay, this seems like a lot for a time. Um, don't think I want that. I think I, I think I'd require more commitment as an action. Maybe it's trying to do too much though. Maybe the point as a technique is to protect yourself. So I'm, I'm not gonna even make it obscure. I'm not going to uh, make attacks your own and you Could just flatly give them. Mm. You provoke opportunity attacks. You can't make attacks of your own, and you. I want to give them like mundane resistance because if they're actually missed, then it kind of makes sense that you shouldn't be able to slice through them. Um, but it's to the beginning of their next turn. And you... Okay. I'm going to say... Uh... You could make them vulnerable to something. So you can't make attacks... Uh, you are resistant to mundane damage, but vulnerable to spell damage. Or we can just up their defense. So here's what I'm thinking. Is that I want them to use their attack. So that they can kind of like move around. And then I want them to escape as a technique. Normally you can disengage as a... Um, it takes 15 feet of movement, and then nothing can provoke opportunity attacks. This would be instead investing a technique to do something similar. Um, and I think later you would modify misshape so that they can do like attacks in in the misshape, or that they can, uh, uh, you know, fade into the shadows or, or stuff like that. But you no, know let's just sit here for a little bit. And we'll call mist form. We'll we'll reference this term kind of throughout the uh, throughout their class. Oh, give the screen. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so so bad. Weakness to lightning makes sense for the water type stuff. Yes, all the Pokemons. Um, yeah, I agree. That could be that could be the thing. Or we can let them make use of lightning because we don't have any class that's like explicitly, you know, in that sort of stormy area. Maybe that's something that they can expand into. Uh, might be an interesting choice if Mistwalkers can choose at level 3 between offensive mobility, like a stream of water. Yeah, dope. Um, or defensive mobility, something like free movement and fog glide. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, need a, I need to reference my Dryad stuff. Well, I'm going to totally rework Dryad anyway. But it has some mist form stuff that it gets at level 12, where it's just like, if it's chilling in this mist bank, 
basically i think other people are like healing and and you're basically just like like everywhere and nowhere at the same time um which i, I don't i don't think i really like it kind of made sense but there's so much going on in that class that i'm glad people didn't vote for it because it just needs to be it needs so much love it's a really cool idea and also way 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 too complicated because you're um you're spawning little plant babies that you then grow up into different types of plants and and you also have spells so there's just like there's too much um but this is looking it's it's okay Take on a misform until the beginning of your next turn. While in this form, you do not provoke opportunity attacks. You cannot make um, attacks of your own. Uh... Let's do... Oh. Let's do this. As a reaction to an incoming uh, weapon attack. Oh, let's see. While in mist form. All right, hold on. I have very specific verbiage. As a reaction, an incoming attack while well, in this form, you can uh, ignore. Oh, you gain. His reaction to an incoming weapon attack while in this form. I want them to to be able to uh, to avoid the attack, but then resolidify to like cancel their their mist shape early. But I feel like they probably want to do that anyway. Part of me was thinking like, okay, as a reaction. Um, you come, you come out of the misform, and then you strike it at an opponent. Uh, but in order to do that, you kind of want to want there to be a better benefit from being in misform, so that people have the they have the have to make the choice between like, should I stay in because it protects me, or should I leave and and attack? Which, so I'm not really, no, I'm not feeling that. So this is a pretty okay foundation. Um, I feel there's still one more thing missing here, I feel like. But we're going to... Let's move into class decisions. So I'm going to say, like... Uh, um, let's say... This is an awful name and it's not going to stay that way. So a dissolving mist hunter is going to, uh, when you take on mist form, you also become uh, obscured to, oh, obscured. Or as a while in let's call it light mist. It's awful. Um, so obscured. This is going to be our um, our defensive mist hunter. So obscured. What it does is that uh, enemies will basically. Their attacks against you 
will be untrained, which means that they have to make that at a negative two. So that's where your protection is coming in. It expands this mist shape here and makes it a little bit better. That's a pretty big boost, um, but only if like you're in the front and tanking and also making use of, of mist shape. Um, it's also super boring. So I could do like Uh, disperse. Trying this again. Uh, when you come out of this form, you leave behind a uh, 15 by 15 cloud. Or, let's see. What's the difference between fog and mist? I want to use them interchangeably. When you come out of mist form, you leave behind a uh, fog cloud that obscures vision of creatures outside of it. Oh, you, you can. So it's an option. Leave behind a uh, this cloud expires at the of your All right expires at the end oh, and of the current turn so basically you are uh a we tempest ability yeah totally that'd be really dope um we can start i think playing with some of the lightning stuff probably once we move closer to level six because we'll kind of jump into some some power amplification. But this, uh, let's see. So this is twofold here. Um, so when you take on the mist form, you're also considered obscured. So enemies who try to hit you, they have a negative two. Doesn't matter what their bonus is, it's negative two. That's very, very, very strong. Um, Actually, I'll say obscured. <clears throat> no, it just makes sense. Okay. And then uh, when they come out of mist form, you can, as an option, leave behind a, a fog cloud that obscures the vision of creatures outside of it. So if you're just, your turn begins, mist kind of disperses, settles around you. Uh, you then can if you have the ability to to hide so you're obscured from everybody because if they can't see into the the mist then you're considered obscured to all hostile combatants and you can take an action to hide an action is really strong but uh but you can kind of become hidden and then run off to some other corner of the map so there's it's more being elusive uh yeah, we'll call this something better, better, uh, better later. But that's like tanky, but also kind of roguey, which I think is how they would tank. Is not because their AC is increasing, but because they're creating impediments that make it so other people have a harder time to hit them. Let's see what else. Um, so dissolving mist hunter. Uh, let's do. So I want to play with mist form a little bit too. Uh, reprising. Uh, as a reaction to an incoming uh, attack. In mist form. You can. can move up to five feet immediately make 
and opportunity. You can make an opportunity attack against the attacker. Uh, as a reaction to an incoming attack while in mist form, uh, move up to five feet. I want them to to appear from the mist, or rather re-solidify, and then take an attack in whatever form that is. Um, and But when I compare this to something like the Berserker, Berserker doesn't need to do this. Um, or rather, they don't they don't get this as cheaply. They have to take a bunch of damage. I think you're taking the damage as well, but um, Hmm. What if I just say uh, you are able to and oh, you know, what? why don't I just say that they can attack while in this form. You can attack while in form but doing so will end the effect uh, this basically just gives them the opportunity to make an opportunity attack against people and now I kind of want them to get something that triggers an opportunity attack so like if they were to be attacked um, Dense mist. It's all awful. Uh, uh, you can, you can now attack while in mist form, but doing so will end the. Oh, you know what? I'll empower that attack too. And your first, actually, we'll uh, we'll work with the tempest stuff because I I think this might be might be fine. Your first attack from maybe we just give them. I think I'm overthinking this. Yeah, bro. Um. Attacking a while in this form and the effect immediately. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna work with this a little bit differently. Uh, okay, so I can nix this whole thing. Uh, when you attack from this form, or rather, your first attack while in this form uh, deals an additional 1d4 lightning damage if it hits. So they, um, so this would be like. Me, I imagine like a like a lightning razor. Call it sky razor. I think we're looking maybe a little bit too far upwards, but it's okay. Um, I'm gonna call them. Slang Mist Hunter. 
Okay, so your first attack while in misform deals an additional 1d4 lightning damage if it hits. And then I'm going to give them fun reaction stuff. Let's say... Uh, As a part of me just wants to give them like a fun attack, like a lightning bolt attack, but I feel like this is this is entering the territory of like it's getting weirdly castery. Kind of. I'm not sure how I feel about it yet. Uh, but a classic play with around with the drowning condition would be neat. You know, I did have some very brief thoughts uh, regarding that when we were talking through this. And I think you're right. Uh, drowning condition is pretty strong though, since it deals true damage. But I could I can imagine something like that, especially for like higher level. Probably like a higher level caster. So like, yeah, different class, like you're saying. It would be interesting if the, um, if we did like a Corsair class that had, had the ability to be uh, like a half caster. We can do some fun stuff. Uh, Uh, da, 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 da. So it costs them a technique to do this. Later on, I imagine that they'll get different ways to jump into a misshape. So for example, um, at level 5, just to jump around, I can imagine one being like your mist form, which I may as well just call it mist form. So mist shape. Uh, your mist form. What was I doing? Uh, like I want to give them the ability. Okay, so your mist form can now be used as a reaction to an incoming attack. But for any of that to make sense. So instead of a technique, they can use a, like a reaction, like, oh, I missed. <laughs> you missed me. Um, and then if they were, uh, if they had the light mist, or if we're being really um, on the nose, you can call it like a defensive. Uh, let's see. There, I will come up with a better name for this stuff. I, I promise. I, I have promise. Um, but if they were to use it as a reaction to an incoming attack, because you get that at level five, then this also applies. And linking this, all the, the stuff and like building it on top of one another is something that I'm trying to do throughout all the the classes. But anyway, like boom, um, that would have more value. Uh, it would also have value if it was. If you were just constantly, you know, taking half damage from while being in, in mist form. Uh, but in order to do that, maybe I feel like that should still be the the thing, but maybe you can live in one of these. Anyway, we're gonna do. I want to go a different direction and say uh, uh, it. It won't be called this, but like divining diving. Hmm. Divining. Uh, Mister Hunter, I'll say like. 
finding. No, let's do uh, uh okay, well, you're passing just hunter. Just funter. And we'll say like Okay, so I know we're working this out all here. But man, I do not work work well on stream. Uh this is so much easier for me to do if <laughs> If I'm off stream. So when this does make it into something, uh, we will find that it is totally different <laughs> or somewhat different, but it, this is this is good talking about things. Um, I want to do something more like that feels like jungly tribal blue, you know? Uh, but blue energetic not lightning i feel like um like I, I want to to honor to connect what can what can we do uh what if i was like walk with me and this might not be the time for this level, but um, enter uh, mist form. You can take one willing ally with you. This seems like super high level stuff, so it's not gonna live here, but I'm just getting the idea down on paper. So like, what if you can, can grab somebody who, and then like pull them along with you so you're moving through other people's spaces and none of you are taking opportunity attacks and then you deposit them at the beginning of your next turn. Like, wouldn't that be interesting just to have one person come with you? Imagine the um, the synergy with like, like maybe this is the support class when you're pulling people around the battlefield and like setting them up so that they can fire down on, on enemies. Uh, you know, and whenever they get into trouble, you're like, boof, you know, grab, pull you use the, your movement move across the battlefield deposit you you know and then they they leap back into um, the battlefield what if they have um again this, this might not be the class uh or the or the power hierarchy for it but uh just to get the idea down um uh you know, part of me doesn't even want them to have a mist form necessarily. I want them to fight inside of some some mist bubble that they've created and be able to just like appear in certain spots and disappear. And like, you know, that seems maybe it's too heroic. Uh, but if you can plant little mist, like pockets of mist around and then use them as like teleportation or like moving through different locations that might be better yeah thanks Henry definitely trying to I want to get better about this stuff too I want to figure out how to share in a way that is able to be digested um, also would be you know with between the two of you you're doing a great job like being interactive and, and that sort of thing but if i can have things focused at the start and say hey here's the structure in which we play in um and then you can feed ideas and we can kind of move through it all together i think that that'd be fun for for me too uh anyway so there's a recall here that i was thinking uh, about oh no what i do i refresh the page okay um recall so let's say La, 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 la. Um, they'd teleport back to their original position after making an attack. That'd be fun. Doesn't need to live here. Um, I'm going to do random nonsense. That goes down here. Okay, your first attack on this form deals an additional 1d4 lightning damage if it hits. That's fun. What uh, you know what? Why don't we... Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. 
Okay. I, I think I'm, I'll probably end up tuning some stuff later. What if it gave them like a longer ranged attack? Like what if, what if you're getting hit by something and you have no idea where it's coming from? Or, you know, the, like the, the reach of your weapon increases to, so if you were to create, like deposit a cloud of mist, what if you could attack things within that cloud? So that it's just dangerous to be there. The thing is that it also needs to have a resource. It can't just be always on. And in order for us to do that, you would probably need to give them something similar to ritual slots, uh, like the Justicar has. And Justicar is the only one that has it currently. Uh, the Jester has like bags of bag of tricks. And, but I, I think that ritual slots might actually work. And then they might it might make me feel better about some of the decisions that I'm making. Stuff like this can still feel very functional and grounded. Like a blade dancer is just going to do this because they they know how to fight. Um, they don't necessarily need to be modified by any you know, magical capabilities. Hmm. Pieces are coming together and I, I feel that there's like things are I have a very specific image in my head, but I can't get it out. It's very like, like, ruins, mist. Kind of, sort of, tribal. Um, assault and in ambush. And then blue, like, connective tissue magic. Um, these are feels. <laughs> Oh, they could pop out a mist cloud when they get hit. Yeah, that'd be fun. Uh, Rituals time thematics. Yeah, totally. Uh, natural attack with reach. Some s steamy whip. Um, yeah, I would probably ha have to figure out the flavor of it. Um, I almost feel like um, like razors made of dense. You ever cut your foot on grass? <laughs> You know, it's just like, or you ever just like, like play with a blade of grass? You're like, oh, you know, grass is fun. Um, and then you end up cutting your finger on it. I haven't done that in a long time. But the, the feeling of something that shouldn't cut you, cutting you, that's an interesting concept um, thematically to, to play with with these people. I want them to be mysterious, yet grounded if you knew what was going on. Um, maybe. I don't know. The fog, cloud, invisible, attacker type of image sounds... Yeah, it does sound very, very heroic, one-man army sort of situation, though. And I have to reconcile that with the fact that I want all the characters to feel like you're not a god. You know, I want the game to be more grounded than than Dungeons and Dragons uh, until you get to the higher levels. Like at the higher levels, who even who even cares? Um, you know, at level twelve, I had it so you're like you're solving world-ending problems, and at that point, just be awesome because you're probably going to die, and then your legacy will live on, and then that's that's what people will will care about, or you'll ret retire, I guess, hopefully before you get that point. But it is a magical world, so like all this stuff is possible. It just needs to be, it needs to feel like it, like it's not overpowered, <laughs> I think. Uh, let's see. We could do something very simple, too. If their combat style was grounded... Okay, I kind of want to... I think I'm going to play with this a little bit more later. And just do the, like, do the ritual slot thing. 
uh, ritual slots, I guess I would go here, and then it'd be like, um, sure, let's see. Yeah, like you expand a original slot to form a, you know what? Form a bank of at a location you can see within 30 feet of you. This effect as for up to excuse me one minute or well no one minute's a long time well that's fine one minute or until you cast another so maybe the the power expansion can come from like gaining the ability to place more than one of these things um. The oracle is kind of like that, where they have they have these um, ethereal strands that they connect to people, and they can kind of like manipulate fate. But in order to, or like at level five, they gain the ability to to place two of them. So like one on this person, one on this person, and then they can like um, ruin your day. Maybe. Okay, I think this is just brainstorming session. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna replace this though. Ambusher, Hunter, Protector. Okay, well, this seems like it has potential. I also feel like you can easily reskin any of this stuff. Um, so the Exile class that I was going to be using before, basically, they would deal in um in anima magic which is like spirit magic and i could totally see them doing the same exact thing um with that i could see them instead of becoming a like a misty sort of form they would just be like ethereal and be able to ghost walk through people uh and so so maybe maybe this isn't as specific as i want it to be because i I want it to have meaning. All the classes need to feel like need to feel like they make sense um, in the world, like they have a purpose, or they derive from from somewhere, because it makes you unique. Oh, it's unique. But uh, that's where I'm going to cut it for now. Thank you all for for hanging out. Get back to my big dumb face. And uh, yeah, this is this is helpful. I'm I'm gonna put this together uh, more in the in the next packet, which is very close to being done. You will see the oracle. You'll see the um, the Justicar, and then there's some notes about pantheons too, for all of the different religions. That actually, it's just one pantheon per lineage, so. It's kind of cheating, honestly, but all the individual gods uh, within those pantheons, you could probably imagine that they would all have their own like religions and stuff too. Uh, and then that'll be hitting uh, the supporter chat here soonish, and then it'll be released to the public probably at the same time that we do the uh, the actual play. 
which we're going to record it on Monday. And then I need to figure out when to release it. Might end up being that Friday. The, the fr not, oh yeah, next, next week, next Friday, probably. But we'll see. All right. Thank you all. Thank you, Henry. Thank you, Box Fisher. Thank you, Nansen. And uh, anybody else that was lurking. I'll check y'all later.